In this video, we're going to focus on concave and convex mirrors. The horizontal line is known as the principal axis. This is a concave mirror. And this is a convex mirror. Somewhere on the left side, you have the focal point and also the center. Imagine if you turn this into a circle. The center, C, is basically the center of that circle. And the distance between any point of the circle and the center is known as the radius. So therefore, between the center of curvature and the mirror is the radius of curvature. You need to know that the focal length is half of the radius of curvature. The left side of the mirror is usually the front side. That's where you place the object. To the right, this is the back side, or this is behind the mirror. And the same is true for a convex mirror. The left side is the front, the right side is the back. Whenever you place the object in front of the mirror, which is usually the case, DO is positive. And whenever DO is positive, it's a real object. If somehow the object were to be behind the mirror, it's really a virtual object, and DO is negative. Now, the image. Let's say the image is over here. Let's just assume that it's in that position. The distance between the image and the mirror is di. If the image is in front of the mirror, di is positive. So di is positive on this side. If the image is behind the mirror, di is negative. Whenever di is positive, you have a real image. And whenever di is negative, you have a virtual image. In addition, the focal length, f, is the distance between the focal point and the mirror. For a concave mirror, the focal length is positive. For a convex mirror, the focal length is going to be negative. So make sure you remember that fact because it's going to help you whenever you're solving a problem. Now the equation that relates the focal length with the object distance and the distance of the image is this equation. 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di. do is the distance between the object and the mirror. di, as you know, is the distance between the image and the mirror. Now the next equation that we need to go over is the magnification equation. Magnification is equal to the ratio of the image height and the height of the object. It's also equal to negative di over do. If the magnification is positive, that means that the image is upright with respect to the object. So let's say the object is up. Then the image would be in the upward direction. It's upright. If the magnification is negative, then the image is inverted with respect to the object. So this object is facing the upward direction, and the image is facing the downward direction. So we say that the image is inverted. Now, if the absolute value of the magnification is greater than 1, the image is larger or taller than the object. So the image is enlarged. If the magnification is less than 1, the absolute value that is, then the image is going to be reduced in size. It's going to be shorter than the object. So I wanted to go over the sign conventions before we work through a problem. So let's say if we have a concave mirror and the focal length is 8 centimeters and we're going to place an object 24 centimeters away from the mirror. So and let's say the height of the object is 4 centimeters. With this information, 
determine where the image is located, how tall the image is, and also the magnification. Determine if we have a real image, a virtual image, if it's upright, inverted, enlarged, or reduced. So let's start with the equation 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 divided by di. So for a concave mirror, the focal length is positive. So we're going to plug in positive 8. do is 24, and we're looking for di. So whenever you have a, an equation with fractions and you want to solve for the missing variable, you can clear away the fractions by multiplying both sides by the common denominator, which is 24 di. 8 and 24 can go into 24, so we can clear away every fraction. So let's multiply 1 over 8 by 24 di. We have to distribute the 24 di to every term in the parentheses. So 24 divided by 8, that's 3. So we have 3 di. Next, we're going to multiply 24 di by 1 over 24. So the 24s cancel, and all we have left over is just di. And then we're going to multiply 24 di times 1 over di. di will cancel, and we'll simply get 24. So let's subtract both sides by di. And let's make some space. So these two variables cancel. 3 di minus 1 di is 2 di. And if we divide both sides by 2, we can see that di is 24 over 2, which means that it's 12. But it's positive 12, not negative 12. So since di is positive 12, do we have a real image or a virtual image? Whenever di is positive, you have a real image. Now, if di is positive, this image, will it form in front of the mirror, that's the left side? or behind the mirror, the back, the, um, the back side or the right side. Since di is positive, the image is going to form in front of the mirror, that's the left side. Now what is the magnification? Magnification is negative di over do. di is 12, do is 24, so the magnification is a half. So because the absolute value of the magnification is less than 1, the image will be reduced. The image is going to be shorter than the object. Now, is the image upright or inverted? Because the magnification is negative, the image is inverted. So if the object is facing the upward direction, the image will be facing a downward direction. So now let's prove this by drawing a ray diagram. But before we do that, let's calculate the height of the image. Since the magnification is negative a half, you just got to multiply negative a half by HO. It's going to be a negative 2. But if you want to solve it, use this equation. So m is negative 1 over 2 hi, we're looking for it, ho is 4. So if you cross multiply, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4, and 2 times hi, that's what we have on that side, and then if we divide by 2, you can see hi is negative 2, it's half of ho. So now let's see if we can draw a ray diagram. So here's our concave mirror. Let's say this is the focal point, and that's 8 centimeters from the mirror. So this would be about 16, and this is 24. So let's draw the object. Now the first ray that we need to draw is going to be parallel to the principal axis, but it's going to emanate from the object, it's going to go straight to the mirror, and then it's going to bounce back through the focal point. Now the second ray that we need to draw is going to go from the object through the focal point. Let's do that again. It's going to hit the mirror, and then it's going to go that way. So granted, this diagram is not perfectly drawn to scale, but we can see that the image is inverted 
and it's reduced. Notice that it's about half the size of the object. It's shorter. And the fact that the magnification is negative, you can see that it's inverted. It's upside down. Now, the focal point is 8 centimeters from the mirror. And over here, this is about 16. So we can see that the image is approximately in the right location because it needs to be about 12 centimeters from the mirror, which is what we have here. So it's between the focal point and the object. By the way, at 16, this is the, the center of curvature because that's twice the value of f. The radius is always going to be 2f. So that's all you need to do to draw the ray diagram for this particular example. So whenever you have an object that's placed beyond the center of curvature, the image that's formed is going to be a real image. As you can see, the light rays actually converge at that point. It's going to be inverted because it's upside down. And it's going to be a reduced image because it's shorter than the object. But now what's going to happen if we take the object and let's say if we move it on the center of curvature, what type of image will form? Let's say the focal point is still 8 centimeters from the mirror. And so this is going to be the center. So let's place the object at 2f from the mirror, or at the center. So we're going to draw the same two rays. The first ray is going to go from the object to the mirror, and then it's going to bounce towards the focal point. The second ray is going to go from the object through the focal point. It's going to touch the mirror, and it's going to bounce back parallel to the principal axis. So as you can see, we have another uh, image that's inverted. Where it really should be, if I drew this correctly, it should be over here. The image should be at the exact position as the object, but inverted with the same size, so it's not enlarged or reduced. Let's see if I can draw this better. Maybe th this line is the one that's bad. My drawing is not to scale, but it's supposed to be something like that. If it's on the center, it's supposed to be the same size as the object. So you get a real image that's inverted. Now what's going to happen if we place the object between the center and the focus? So we're going to draw the same rays. The first ray is going to go straight to the mirror and pass through the focal point. The second ray is going to go through, let's do that again, it's going to go through here and bounce back parallel to the principal axis. So the image is between the center and the focal point, but it's still inverted. But notice that it appears to be a little bit larger than the object. So it's enlarged. But it's still a real image because the light rays, they converge at that point. But now what's going to happen if we place the object on the focal point? So what's going to happen in this case? If we try to apply uh, the same method of drawing uh, the ray diagram as we did before. We can draw the first ray, but the second ray we can't draw because typically it would go from the object to the focal point, but the, the object is on a focal point, so we can't draw the second ray. So let's draw this ray backwards. Let's say if it passes through the focal point and bounces back towards the object. Let's say if we have another ray that passes through the focal point and bounces this way. These light rays, they don't converge. It turns out that if you place the object on the focal point, you really don't get an image. 
and if you use the equation, it appears as if the image is at infinity. For example, the focal length is still 8, but the object is also 8 centimeters from the mirror. So if you subtract both sides by 1 eighth, these will cancel. So therefore, 0 is 1 over di. The only way this could be true is if a di is infinity, which means the image is so far that it doesn't exist. Now, what's going to happen if we place the object between the focal point and the mirror? Let's say if we put it here. What's going to happen? So we're going to draw the first ray the same way. It's going to pass to the object, bounce from the mirror through the focal point. Now, we need to draw another ray. And the second ray is going to go through the focal point, And it's going to pass to the object. And it's going to interact with the mirror. And then it's going to bounce straight. Now, notice that the light rays, they don't converge anywhere. The only time they intersect is at the object, which is where they should intersect. But notice what's going to happen if we extend these lines. Let's extend the blue line. If we extend the yellow line, notice that these two, they intersect at this point. By the way, just in case you're wondering, the ray that we need to extend is the reflected ray, which is the ray with the arrow. So we have to extend this ray to the other side, and also uh, this one, the one with the arrow, to the uh, other side. But as you can see, if we place the object between the focal point and the mirror, we get an image that's enlarged. It's taller than the object. It's also upright. It's in the same direction as the object. It's facing the upward direction. And is it a real image or a virtual image? This image is a virtual image. For one reason, it's formed behind the mirror. Keep in mind, the left side is the front of the mirror. That's where the object is. And the right side is in the back or behind the mirror. So therefore, DI is negative behind the mirror. And so we have a virtual image. As you can see, the light rays do not actually converge behind the mirror. You can see that with the dashed lines. They appear to converge, but they do not actually converge. Whenever the light rays appear to converge, as indicated with the dotted lines, or the dashed lines, you have a virtual image. Whenever the light rays actually converge at a point to form an image, the image is a real image. And it's going to be in front of the mirror. It's going to be on the left side, as opposed to the back of the mirror. So just make sure you know those facts. So now let's move on to our next example. And that is the concave mirror. Now let's say that the focal length is 6 centimeters. And the object is placed 3 centimeters in front of the mirror. Where is the image located? And what is the magnification? So let's use the same equation. Now keep in mind, we have a convex mirror instead of a concave mirror. So for a convex mirror, the focal length is negative. So we need to multiply both sides of the equation by 6 di to clear away all three fractions. Negative 1 6 times 6 di, the 6 will cancel, and so it would simply be negative di. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and for the last two, these will cancel and we'll simply get 6. So let's subtract both sides by 2 di. Negative di minus 2 di is negative 3 di. So 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So the fact that di is negative means that we have a virtual image that is going to form behind the mirror. Now let's calculate the magnification. 
which is negative di divided by do. di is negative 2, do is 3, so the magnification is positive 2 thirds. Two negative signs will convert into a positive sign. So because the magnification is positive, that means that the image is upright. So if the object is facing upward, the image is also facing the upward direction. But notice that the magnification is less than 1. So the image is reduced. It's going to be shorter than the object. But now let's draw a picture. So first let's draw the principal axis and then the convex mirror. So the focal point is 6 centimeters from the mirror. So over here is the uh, center. And the object is 3 centimeters from the mirror. So it should be somewhere over here. Let's make the object a little bit taller. So the first ray that we're going to draw is going to be parallel to the principal axis. It's going to go from the object to the mirror. And then if you draw a dashed line, you can see that the ray is going to bounce this way. But my line is not straight, so let's do that again. So that's better. Now, we need to draw another ray. We need to draw a line that passes through the object to the center. So another light ray, let me put it in green. It's going to go this direction. And this is where the image is going to form. So as you can see, it's between the mirror and the focal point, but it's behind the mirror. Keep in mind, where the object is, is the front of the mirror. So the right side is behind the mirror. So because it's behind the mirror, di is negative, And so we have a virtual image. And a magnification, we said, was positive 2 thirds. It's positive, so it's upright. The image is in the same direction as the object, but it's 2 thirds the height of the object. So as you can see, it's shorter than the object. It's reduced. And so now you have two ways to figure out if the image is going to be real or virtual, upright or inverted, enlarged or reduced. You can simply use the equations. Keep in mind, if di is negative, it's a, a virtual image, and it's behind the mirror. And if m is positive, it's upright. And if the absolute value of m is greater than 1, it's enlarged. As long as you remember those key details, and the fact that the focal length is negative for a convex mirror, but positive for a concave mirror, you can figure out anything you need even without drawing a ray diagram. But it helps to draw the ray diagram if you remember how to draw it. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.